Decembers ago, Brian started complaining of nonspecific back pain. His back hurt, and we really gave him a hard time about it. And we kept thinking, oh, he pulled a muscle since he's so active, and you know, it didn't get better for a month, and so took him to his pediatrician. He was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma and a tumor on his T-level vertebrae in his back. I even named my tumor. His name was Tony. There are no words like your child has cancer to hear. Um, we were devastated, and it was probably the scariest time of our lives. Once he got diagnosed, we were in there getting his port surgery and his first chemo treatment within a week. And so we went to Children's, and we had a great team there at Children's. They um, were incredibly kind and caring and wonderful people. He spent something like a hundred and uh, we, we counted it up, 156 days in that stretch of time where he was either at the doctor's office or admitted in the hospital. Through it all, I feel like Brian was the one who never let down. He never did the poor me thing. He never um, just gnashed his teeth and was, I can't get through this. You know, he was the one who pulled us through and propped us up. Brian just forged ahead. He played, he learned, you know, his teachers would come to the hospital and he would do his schoolwork. He would uh, Skype with his classroom. Many times I walked into his hospital room and he would be on Skype interacting with his classmates. When you're going through the cancer treatments, it really messes with your bone marrow and you can't produce red cells. And so if you don't have a high enough red cell count, you can't have your chemotherapy. We saw firsthand how important it was to, to receive blood. Through the course of his treatments, that almost year-long stretch, I think he ended up having eight transfusions and two or three rounds of platelets. Some people don't have the right kind of blood or don't have enough of it and they need to get a surgery. And sometimes their life wouldn't be possible after their surgery if they didn't have other people's donations. Because if you didn't give blood, then I wouldn't get white blood cells like I needed to, and I wouldn't get platelets, and I wouldn't get hemoglobin. When they asked us if we would be the spokespeople last year for the, the Red Cross blood drive, the holiday drive, and uh, he had a fun time with it. He, he loved uh, taping the commercial. At that blood drive, he was there. He was greeting everybody. He was going up to them, and he was thanking them and saying, thank you so much for coming. It means so much that you're here. And when you see a kid bald, coming up to you full of energy and saying, you are making a difference in my life. You are changing the world. I think that's a really powerful message. But to him, he was just saying thank you. Brian, very proud of you. I'm proud of um, how you've come through this entire process. I was proud of you before this, but especially now, um, having gone through what we've gone through together the last year. and. I hope that this cancer stays away and that we have many more years together. I am so proud that you're my son. I wouldn't change you if I could. And I hope you grow up to be a kind person who always reaches out and tries to help people.